Our lives are laid out on a road of bumps, turns, struggles, and more. How do we respond? How do we endure adversity for learning and growth? I'm Aubrey Johnson, and we'll explore these questions and more on The Roads of Rediscovery. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Roads of Rediscovery. I'm your host, Aubrey Johnson. The Road to Rediscovery is about reflecting on past life lessons to learn and grow from them, and of course, take it to the next level and help others who are struggling through dark times. Now, as you know, on The Road to Rediscovery, we are very, very passionate about delivering you quality content that is of value to you and your personal growth. If you love what you hear, please feel free to visit roadsrediscovery.com slash donate. That's road, the number two, rediscovery.com slash donate. We'll even give you a shout out in a future episode. And as always, there is no obligation. We are truly, truly grateful for your listenership. You know, have you ever asked yourself that age old question? What are some of the best things that make life worth living? Well, you know, some may say it's owning their dream home or maybe even retirement or perhaps traveling the world, right? You know, while all those are great things, having a relationship with someone to experience these things is really what makes life worth living. Think about it. How fun is retirement or world travel if you're experiencing it alone? After all, the experience of enjoying an event with someone is what transcends the event itself. My special guest is one part of a dynamic duo of relationship and romance experts with her husband, Erwan, they have taught over 12,000 singles and couples how to have exceptional relationships over a 25-year span. For singles, they support with getting into passionate and successful relationships. For couples, they help them take their relationships to new heights of romance and intimacy. Ladies and gentlemen, let's please welcome Alicia Davon to the show. Hi, Alicia. It's so great to have you here. Thank you, Aubrey. Nice to be here. Oh, great. Yeah, we are so pleased to have you and ready to just unpack some great relationship insights. So um, I, I've, I've, I've checked out your website and, and read a few things about the great work that, that, that you and Erwan are doing. And I wanted to know if you could just give the listeners a little context into this conversation and what we're about to discuss um, by sharing the five key elements of a relationship that you guys dive into? It's a really good place to start. So as you mentioned earlier, Erwan and I, we support both singles and couples in having successful romantic relationships. And I think pretty much everybody wants that. <laughs> if they think yeah. that they can have that and feel like they deserve it and feel like they're able to, mm -hmm. most people want that, right? Yeah. So we, through our own formal training in psychology, and I have a master's degree in training as a therapist, and Erwan mm. has a bunch of things he's done, but also largely through our own experience, you know, being in a relationship together for mm. two decades, you know, working together for pretty much all of that and supporting so many singles and couples, we have created the five part method that we use to teach all of our singles and couples how to have successful relationship lives. So that's mm -hmm. the Davon method. And I'll go through the five parts. I'll go through them kind of quickly and then you can kind of have me dive into whatever you want. Cause if I go okay. into all of them in depth, like we'll be here for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I just want to lay it out and then we can sure. go in however you want. Um, so the first part of the method is consciousness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so consciousness of what? Consciousness of your relationship patterns. So many people might know and other people might not be aware, but we as human beings carry our pasts into our present relationships. Mm -hmm. So true. Big deal, right? I mean, yeah. however we were shaped, whatever experiences we had with our parents, our culture, our religion, our teachers, whatever, we were shaped to see the world and ourselves and other people certain ways, mm -hmm. usually totally unconsciously. And then we carry that forward into our romantic relationships. This mm -hmm. isn't really a terrible thing. This is patterns. Erwan and I call it the relationship blueprint. You know, a lot of it, we kind of 
develops to help us survive in the world. But then right. as we get older, these patterns become limiting and we start to see the same things happening over and over again in our relationship life. So mm -hmm. bringing awareness to that is the first step in learning how to have freedom from that. So you're just not bound. Gotcha. Gotcha. The second part of the method is contact, making contact with what we like to call your deeper self. There's so many words for this. It's a, at the real us, you know, that I think we all somewhere know is there. Sometimes mm -hmm. we're not present to it, but there's different words. You know, some people like to call it, you know, your soul or your spirit or your true self or authentic yes. self or yes. maybe, um, you know, religious names like, you know, God or the Christ consciousness or being really whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. We all have that which we truly are beyond all of this patterning and our personalities and who we usually take ourselves to be. So right. coming into contact with that really creates a nice foundation of presence and awareness and connection with who you are. Mm -hmm. That lays a really nice foundation for the third part of our method, which is chemistry. So this is huge in romantic relationship, obviously, you know, how to have that Carrie Bradshaw in Sex and the City calls it the Zaza Zoo, right? The, spot, yeah. <laughs> the, the chemistry, that thing that's, you know, sets the relationship apart from friendships or family relationships, right? And mm -hmm. it's often present in the beginning of a relationship and then it tends to flatten out. Or you might go on a first date or a second date and be like, where's the chemistry? The person's great, but there was no spark, you know? Like people right. can probably hear themselves in these things. Mm -hmm. You can actually deliberately learn how to create chemistry um, in a relationship. So there's that piece, masculine, feminine dynamics and communication and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. The fourth part of the method we call choreography, which is all about learning to dance through the stages of romantic relationship successfully. So this is all about relationship skills and we've created a roadmap of the different stages of romantic relationship and the different skills that go along with it, right? Like what are the skills that you really need when first dating somebody to have that go well? Right, right. Right, and that's mm -hmm. different than the skills that you need in the more committed, getting with the person for the long-term part of the relationship. Yes. So there's tons of stuff there. And then the fifth part of the method is cultivation of your sexual potential. So you don't want to leave out the sex and the right. actual skills. You know, it's similar to chemistry. A lot of people feel like, well, it was sort of easy in the beginning and then it dropped off and I don't know how to get back. I don't know how to pleasure my partner. I don't know right. what I want. And, you know, so there's all sorts of actual skills that you can learn. So it's not just you've got it or you don't got it. Gotcha. Wow. It really sounds like those five elements um, really uh, uh, provide a holistic um, approach and view into just about every aspect of, of a relationship, uh, whether it's you're seeking a relationship or to enhance your relationship. Is that is that accurate? Yes. You can address these five keys, mm -hmm. whether you're single or in a relationship. And the more that you address them, the better potential partner you're going to be. You'll have so much more to offer. You'll have more of a sense of who you're looking for. And, you know, having that um, valuing growing and developing as a human being, like mm -hmm. having that as something that you do and that you're looking for in a partner is really the number one thing that makes a relationship work. It's not their yeah. perfect skin. It's not their bank account. It's not right. their height. You know, I mean, those yeah. things play a part. You don't want to ignore certain preferences you might have, but sure. it's good to know what the priority is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely have the priorities in, in, in line there um, in, in the right way. So, uh, Wow. Thank you for sharing those insights with us, Alicia. Much appreciated. And I would like to hone in, if you don't mind, I believe element number four, the dancing part. Okay. Um, I want to try to get an understanding when it comes to the horse and the cart type of thing. Um, some of these elements can be, can be um, 
discovered, I guess, early in the relationship. And then to your point in uh, number five, uh, things can drop off, you know, um, and, 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 and some of those elements may be either, um, I don't know, put on a back burner or just no longer given the attention that it uh, received earlier in the relationship. And, and I, I want to know, um, for couples, would this be just, I don't want to sound cliche, but does this sound like, you know, life happens, there's kids, there's finances, there's even exes or in-laws, right? Um, you know, what does, is it, is it, are those the things that cause uh, couples and individuals to lose sight of uh, uh, one or multiple elements? Yes, it's funny. We I just wrote a piece about this and, and it went out to our list yesterday, exactly uh -huh. what you're talking about, that life gets in the way. It's like probably uh -huh. the biggest uh, hindrance to having a great relationship. So we'll focus on couples for a minute. Yes, in the beginning of the relationship, generally speaking, there's novelty and there's excitement and you're in love with the person and they can do no wrong and you mm -hmm. want to see them and you're like, yeah, and usually the sexual aspect is pretty mm -hmm. good. And, you know, all of that happens without you having to do much, right? I mean, right. you kind of need to be open to it and, mm -hmm. but it just happens, right? Yeah. And as you get deeper into relationship and more elements come into the picture, like you're not seeing the person once or twice a week, you are looking at living together, or maybe you yeah. live together and you suddenly have to pay rent together or a mortgage mm -hmm. and you have some kids and then your mom gets sick and then you have a health issue, you know, all, <laughs> all these things start to come into the relationship and yeah. the romantic vibe and the connection time goes on the back burner. It's kind mm -hmm. of like clockwork. I mean, it's default. There's cliches about it, right? Like, oh, yeah. this is my old man or my old lady. <laughs> That's you know, right. Is, and, yeah. you know, and people deal with that mm -hmm. decreased connection and chemistry. Like it's obviously a problem, right? I right. mean, because people have affairs, people get divorced, yeah. Yeah. people become complacent and bored and unhappy. And it's mm -hmm. not like, okay, everybody should have this amazing type of relationship when they're in their later years of it, but it's possible. I mean, it doesn't have to be that things decline, but yeah. most people don't know that you can deliberately start to attend to the relationship and you have to literally fit it in, prioritize it. Mm -hmm. One of the skills in the set of skills we recommend in the relationship stages is lifestyle design. You know, really today more than ever before, people are dealing with total overwhelm with yeah. everything that there is to do and everything coming at them. So you gotta like yeah. be deliberate about it. I see, I see. So it seems like, and, and, and you're right, be purposeful, be deliberate. Um, and, and, and when it comes to those people say date nights or, you know, just special times that you spend with your significant other, um, protecting that time, right? Uh, and and it seems like there's it seems like there's a lot of um, an element of acceptance, I believe, as a couple starts to mature, that you know that ecstasy or that 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 feeling of elation or you know being enamored um, can be redefined. I would imagine as as a couple gets later in years and, and more mature in their relationship. Uh, so there's acceptance, there's um, redefining um, what is bliss. And it seems like there's a, an element of rediscovery, right? Rediscovering the, uh, the closeness and the connection that you have with your significant other and they have, have with you. So um, your tools, I would imagine, help, going back to number four, dance, your tools help to uh, help couples to, to kind of navigate around those real life things that, that happen. Is that right? Yes. 
Okay. We make our work, I'll give you an example, okay? okay? Because our work is very practical. You know, people <laughs> come to us and a lot of people are, you know, some people are single and like, yeah. oh my gosh, so sick of meeting people online and it not working out yes, and really yes. wanting a way to have that go more effectively and efficiently, which we yes. support people in. There's <laughs> definitely some leverage points there. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people are like, I really want to have a great relationship life, but I have no time. You know, I, I open up, their, you know, I have them look at their calendars and it's like, well, wh where's the time for this? Yeah. Yeah. And people want an effective, efficient way to address their relationship life. You don't want to toss it out on its butt, but no. you don't want to <laughs> like, you know, feel like, oh no, I have to stop working. <laughs> I don't have yeah. time for my kids. So, <laughs> so one of the practical ways that we support people is, through the four practices. There are four practices that we recommend to all of our students. And mm -hmm. in our classes, we we train people and practice these practices. I will tell you what they are. Um, the first one, okay, before I say what they are, the purpose of them is to bring more presence and awareness and more juice and turn on into your relationship life, okay? Yeah. Yeah. People are often like, what do I do? You know, uh -huh. okay, I know I need to devote some time. The first practice is meditation. Mm. It has a very wide definition. It does not need to be sitting in full lotus in some crazy <laughs> position for right. two hours and getting enlightened. No, you can. <laughs> but, you know, just any time that you really can sit for a set period of time and breathe and watch your thoughts and keep focused on your body and your breath is a good thing. Mm. And that helps cultivate presence, helps mm. bring who you are really to the forefront. And mm -hmm. then the other things are just there, but they're not so pressing. The second practice we call psychological inquiry, which mm. is a form of you can do this with yourself or journaling, or you can do it with somebody else where you're inquiring and exploring your inner life and your mm -hmm. emotions and your experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The third practice is body practice. So anything that gets you into your body, movement does not need to be some kind of rigorous exercise. It could literally be walking out your front door and going to the lawn and feeling your feet in the grass for five minutes and letting the sun shine on your face or it could right. be yoga or whatever. Mm -hmm. A time for you being in your body. And then the fourth practice is sensual practice, which sounds kind of funny, you know, especially for couples. They're like, okay, we haven't had sex in like way too long or it's so infrequent. And like, mm -hmm. how do we get back in the groove? And usually one or both people isn't quite ready to just jump in and have the wild, crazy sex you had in your yeah, 20s. Yeah. I mean, you can get there <laughs> for sure. Yeah, but yeah. we designed a set of touching practices that couples can engage in that range from really non-sexual, like emotional, heart on or hand on heart, hand on abdomen, breathing together. Right. You know, and then it can get more sensual and we lay them out, you know, and when we teach them. But gotcha. that's one thing that couples can actually do together mm -hmm. to start to engage this. Nice. Very nice. Um, thank you so much for sharing those four practices, because uh, <laughs> I was actually going to ask you, being a big fan of mindful breathing and meditation myself, and I, I'm very purposeful in trying to practice this every day for at least 10 minutes, um, i never given it a thought you know, when it came to how it can help support a relationship, I always thought it was more, um, more inward focused, right? Um, as far as, you know, being, uh, getting in touch with myself and learning, you know, who I am and observing my thoughts, observing my emotions and breathing and, 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 you know, just, just being mindful, uh, and, and, and focusing. Um, uh, but, uh, that first practice being meditation clearly, um, clearly spells out how, uh, how it can support a, a relationship. So I appreciate you sharing, sharing that. And, uh, and, and you, you also segue to the single part. I wanted to touch on the single, um, um, clients that you have and, uh, and just ask some, some of those questions, right? I mean, like you said, they're fed up in a lot of cases, they're done with the apps. Okay. Um, 
there's nothing meaningful there. They've tried and, and it's just, you know, how can I find something meaningful? How can I be successful in finding someone who is uh, looking for the same things in a relationship that I am, right? So um, with that, you know, when I'm not sure how it is today anymore, because back in my dating days, there were no apps, you know, um, much less Same. the internet. <laughs> Same. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Aaron and I have been together a long time, so oh, yeah. I, I'm happy I didn't have to do it. On my oh, you Just, and me both. Believe oh. me, Alicia. Yeah. You and me both. Yeah. You know, uh, when I was single, there was a lot of, um, I guess what some people refer to as game playing, um, when it came to dating, you know, like, um, take someone out for dinner and then you take them back home. Do we do something? Do we not? And if not, then, okay, how many days must go by before I call <laughs> or, you know, uh, do I play like hard to get and pretend like I'm busy and not call for three days? Then you call and then they're upset. You know, I haven't heard from you. you know, a lot of game playing. And, and so I was wondering, you know, um, that can be a real obstacle when it comes to finding a real relationship or something passionate and meaningful. So um, do your single clients um, to this day express that same game playing going on and, and how do you help them uh, navigate or, you know, avert it? Mm -hmm. It's such a good question. It's so funny because tonight we're actually teaching a class on that online. Yeah. It's called flirting, dating, commitment, and sex, and how do they all fit in or not? <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's cool. our weekly mastery of relationship class that we have that's super fun. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of singles, lots of couples in it. And really, yes, I would recommend not playing games. Yeah. But at the same time, you really want to have some, some skill. Now I'm going to say what this means. Okay. So I'm going to talk men and women. This can also apply to same sex couples. You know, we recommend and see that when there's a same sex couple, one person taking the role of the masculine, one person taking the role of the feminine. Yeah works well to create polarity. You're not yes. stuck in those roles. You can swap. I just introduced a huge topic right there and it's very kind of chargy and you know we won't go into it right now, but I guess I'm saying all that because in the example, I'm gonna use man and woman, but it, okay. I don't mean to be ex exclusive. Uh, understood. Yeah. So it's good as a woman to know <laughs> that you have pretty much all the power in the situation. That's a good thing. That mm -hmm. is not like, oh, to the exclusion of the man's power or the man doesn't get what he wants or something. But often women are kind of feel victimized, like, oh, how do I get what I want in romantic relationship? We as women biologically are wired up to, you know, we have that turn on and that sensuality and that draw. We have that. And men respond to that. Mm -hmm. So the degree to which we're willing to, to put it out there, send signals, make our appetite known, you know, our, our wants known, yeah, the yeah. more chance we have to succeed and have the guy respond to us. Mm -hmm. So gotcha. for example, a lot of women tell us like, oh, I don't, I don't like to be the one to approach. I want to be approached. And then they usually preface it by saying, call me old fashioned, but you know, yeah, <laughs> sure. it, right. And <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, any, any woman that wants to approach great, you know, go for right. it. You should yeah. go for where you're drawn. But to the women that are like, yeah, I do like the guy making the first move. Well, the thing to know is that we as women are really the initiators, but we can do it from a very feminine position. So I'll paint a picture. You're at a house party with a bunch of people or you're at a bar or you're wherever and you're a woman and you see a guy and you, you're like, ooh, he's cute. You know, or I like his attention. Mm -hmm. We have so much power. All we have to do is like give him the eyes for half of a second and then maybe we look away. We send a little energy his way or we smile it's unmistakable. I mean, guys are wired to respond to that. <laughs> right. So um, that usually is what kind of cues in a good, in an optimal situation that cues right. the guy like, oh, go, you know, and then yeah. as a guy 
a really good skill is paying attention. And when you feel attracted to somebody, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's your pictures of like, oh, that woman looks like a model and she's the most beautiful woman at the bar. Of course, I'm attracted to her. But, yeah. you know, if you're feeling a draw, you can trust that. So a skill of of the masculine is trusting and going and taking action and responding to her. Yes. That shows the woman you're paying attention. So there's a lot of, I mean, I could go on about this forever, but there's a lot of um, nuance to masculine feminine dynamics and knowing how to use your strengths in the situation I to see. succeed. So it's not about playing games but but you want to have have attention you know let's say the woman kind of gives you a little look and you're like ooh and you yeah. go over there and hey and then she kind of goes cold you know she feels awkward or she's not interested in talking to you anymore yeah you yeah. don't want to stand there and keep trying to engage her you can just friendly <laughs> be like awesome cheers good to meet you and yeah. then get out right because right. you're right. again showing her oh i'm paying attention to you you yeah. just yeah. went cold on me i'm going to go not in some huff you know but just no. like oh cool you don't want you don't want this now bye okay and, yeah right yeah those are examples so i don't recommend like playing games i mean you're what you brought up is yeah if you sleep with someone i mean it's nice uh, gentlemanly to text the next day and be like wow that was so fun i mean <laughs> yeah duh, right i mean that's just <laughs> right. intuitive you don't there's no formula that's right yeah agreed and, uh, and, 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 and thank you for that delineation, Alicia. I, I really appreciate that because, you know, I want the listeners to know, especially those who are single out there that, you know, what you explained, uh, is like you said, it's a skill and, you know, and, and in the scenario you, you drew up, it, you know, it, it's, it's the woman, um, wanting to get the attention and it's the man to be attentive uh, but at the same time, it's also intention, right? Mm -hmm. um, intention, uh, if someone, if a woman's attracted to a man and gives him a look, you know, she, she's she's doing that for attention, but with the intention of connecting with this gentleman, you know, not the intention of um, going three days without calling and trying to just play hard to get or whatever. So so th there's a delineation there. And I appreciate you sharing sharing that that insight for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the last thing I'll say is, I mean, there's a lot in here, um, but the, well, one thing is men might be like, well, but you know, sometimes women, you know, a client of mine texted me yesterday. He's like, this woman keeps like working out right in front of me and like giving me the eyes, but she like won't go out with me. And you know, there's, we like attention as women. And sometimes we're just, yeah you know, testing our equipment to see if it works. So we like, <laughs> like the attention, but all sure. we want is to flirt. We don't want to go out. So there's all sorts of nuance. And yeah. I also want to say that there are challenges with these things. Like a lot of women feel like mm -hmm. they don't know how to show that they're interested or they might feel embarrassed or they're afraid of unwanted attention. So they don't know about opening up and putting it out there. And men have their own issues about paying attention to someone else and, you know, so right. I don't want to skip over that hangups do exist, which is why we start our work with the psychological. So you're not just trying to like execute some tips that you learn, but you yeah. can be present while you're doing it. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, that makes all kinds of sense. I love it. Uh, so Alicia, as we start to wrap up here, um, I wanted to ask you if you can answer in five words or less and, 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 and not because I'm trying to cut you off, but because it's part of a game that I play where I ask my guests at least one question or three. Um, and I try to encourage them to answer in five words or less. That's all. <laughs> so if, if, if you can answer in five words or less for the listeners, um, what is the secret to a successful love life? <laughs> Let's see. Mm. I would say make time and learn amazing skills. Love it. Love it. <laughs> no, that's, that's great. Uh, yeah, yeah. And can you repeat that again? Make time and learn amazing skills. Make time and learn amazing skills. You've heard it here, everyone, <laughs> from Alicia Davon. Make time and learn amazing skills. 
Um, those are the secrets, and they have the secret sauce in getting you where you want to be in your successful um, towards a successful love life. So, uh, Alicia, how can the listeners connect with you and Erwan and learn more about your amazing work and maybe perhaps um, take part in, in a session or so? So for the listeners who are thinking, wow, you know, I could, I'd love to learn some skills. I'd love to learn more about how this work could impact my own love life. There's a couple ways to find out more. So the best way is to contact us and I'm offering a free love life consultation. So this is a conversation between me and you, and we'll get into the nitty gritty of what's going on with you. You can share it all with me. I'll coach you a little. And if it looks like Erewhon and I can support you, then I'll point you towards which of our classes I think would be the best fit. And you can set that up by texting our school. I'll make sure you have all this information, Aubrey, but I'll just say it. It's You can text 415 415- three zero eight nine five eight zero that's four one five three zero eight nine five eight zero you just tell me you know the name of this podcast and your name and that you want a consultation and we'll set up a time to chat so i'll also give you a link people can click to set it up if people prefer to do it that way we also have with the timing of the release of this episode it's really exciting because we have our flagship class called the pleasure course online May 21st and 22nd of 2022. And we go into depth on these five keys of a successful relationship. And I'd love to offer it to your listeners. So I want to give you a code to get $100 off. It's code 100. I'll give you the link to click to get to that course page. And then you enter the code and you can sign up. So some people like to have a conversation first. You can contact us. If you just want to sign up for something, go sign up for the pleasure course. Mm -hmm. Um, You can also find us on Instagram and TikTok at Mm -hmm. Davon Method. And our website is pleasurecourse.com. Wonderful, wonderful. We'll put all of those links, including the promo code, in the uh, episode show notes. Um, What an extraordinary opportunity for the listeners, uh, whether you are single or part of a relationship, uh, to, to connect with, with, with such insightful um, uh, experts in this field, uh, Erwan and Alicia Davon, um, to, uh, to take your relationship to the next level or to find that one person that is meant for you um, for a long-lasting life partner, uh, successful um, love and loving relationship. So um, Alicia, thank you so much for coming on the show. I I really, really appreciate your time and the listeners appreciate your time. And I hope down the line, you would be open to coming back on the show to uh, give us some more updates. There's a couple other topics regarding relationships (laughs) I wanted to cover with you, (laughs) maybe in a future episode, uh, if you don't mind. Absolutely. We can do a part two. It'll be fun. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Alicia, for coming on the show. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And I want to thank all of you for coming to the show, for tuning in and listening. And remember, if you have a loved one or a colleague or just a good friend, someone you know, who may be going through dark days of despair in a relationship, Maybe they lost that spark with their significant other, or maybe they're tired of being alone and single looking for that significant person, Um, just going through dark days of despair. And and those relationship uh, 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 problems or issues is affecting every other aspect of their life, how they interact with people, their performance at work, and, 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 and so forth. I humbly ask that you please share this show with them. Because on the road to rediscovery, we want our listeners to know two things. Number one, you're not alone. And two, there is always, always hope. The road to rediscovery, it's a movement, a revolution. And guess what? You are now part of it. We're all roadies on this journey of life. And it sure feels good having you on the road with me. Thanks again for listening. We'll chat again soon. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of The Road to Rediscovery. We'd love to hear from you. Shoot us an email at roadsrediscoverypodcast at gmail.com and leave us any questions or comments you may have. 
The Road to Rediscovery is an AJ Shark production.